Hey, I'm Earl Parson. I'm the Quonset House guy, and we're here to talk about your Quonset House today. So I have a, a great question that got written in um, by a reader of the blog. And if you want to send me a question, you can go to clevermoderns.com and at the top of the page, find the Quonset Q&A link and send me your questions on the form there. So I will take your questions here on the YouTube channel and we'll uh, share the information with everyone. So today's question came from a woman named Marsha and Marsha, thank you for writing in with your question. Marsha asks, hi Earl, awesome blog. Thank you very much. Does adding windows or skylight panels decrease the ability of the structure to withstand hurricanes? That's a very good question. We are contemplating building a Quonset home in South Florida. So hurricanes, obviously a big concern and the structural strength of the building is a big concern, obviously uh, with hurricanes. So let's talk about, um, let's see, let's talk about the strength of Quonsets. And I get asked a related question a lot, which is just what is the um, strength, you know, the difference in strength between a Q or an S model Quonset. And I think it's kind of a related topic that we're gonna just cover all of this together today. So I made a drawing that I will share. And so here you can see, um, it's just sort of a basic structural concept um, that has to do with the lateral stability of a structure. And when we're talking about hurricane winds, uh, we are talking about a lateral force, okay? A lateral meaning it's moving sideways. Uh, you have the building and we have winds blowing and pushing really hard. Okay, now an interesting twist to that is that an earthquake is also a lateral load. So earthquake loads and hurricane loads are in the same general category of structural analysis, if you will. So in an earthquake, the ground is moving laterally and uh, under the building, okay, causing lateral, lateral distress on the building. Uh, in, a, in a hurricane or a wind event, you have lateral pushing uh, with, the, with the building anchored to the ground and, and pushing you know, laterally on the building that way. So in my diagram here, you can see that a triangle obviously is the most stable shape, right? So if you look at the triangle here on the image and assuming that the that the corners of the base of the triangle are anchored firmly to the ground or to the foundation, you know, if that can't move uh, and you push, you know, uh, at the top with a lateral load, you have, I mean, and forgetting about, you know, earthquakes and wind, right? But if you just have a, you know, if you have a triangular shape and you push at the top, it will, it will resist with st and have stability at the top, okay? Versus a square or a rectangular shape, right? Where if you, you know, if you push on that, there can be a very easy tendency to rack and, and move to the side um, with a square or a rectangular shape, okay? So if you compare, a Q model Quonset, which is just the basic semicircular round shell, or uh, an S model Quonset. Okay, an S, the easy way to remember this is that S stands for sidewall. I don't know if that's really why they call it that. That's my easy mnemonic device for that. So an S model being a, um, a sidewall model and a uh, Q model just being a basic um, semicircular uh, quonset. Okay, so uh, the Q model is you know closer in shape to the triangle in that you know when you when you push on it from the side, um, it's going to have more inherent stability to a point, right? Uh, than an S model, which has stands up on those side walls, and those side walls are going to be prone to racking and, um, you know, uh, lateral deflection in that way um, from that. Now, uh, all that being said, that's just basically, um, I'm just talking in broad brush strokes of general concept, right? 
this does not mean that an S model can't be uh, engineered to be you know, sound in a hurricane up to a certain mile an hour winds, right? So um, uh, depends that then on the engineering of the building. And so what are the implications of these shape characteristics for, uh, what are the implications of that on the way the building will be engineered? So uh, for the same wind load, uh, you you could sort of imagine then that the the Q model will be stronger, but then the S model maybe they'll have to make the steel thicker, right? In order to accommodate um, the extra you know strength requirements because the shape itself is inherently a little bit weaker now how much weaker and all of that I can't really speak to. I mean, obviously they're all relatively strong structures, um, but the engineering will will dictate that on, on a comparably sized S model, just logic would tell us that you'll have more metal, it will be a more expensive structure than um, than the Q model, right? One of the, one of the main factors that, that from my understanding of it that goes into the pricing of a Quonset, uh, a Quonset type building a metal arch building is um, the you know the thicker the metal the thicker the panels you know the more metal goes into the building and that drives up the price so um, another factor is that the um, the thicker the panels uh, if you're building it yourself a a um, a a heavier panel is just harder to manage, right? If you're building a tall thing uh, up on scaffolding and you have a much heavier panel, uh, make, you know, it's just harder to deal with. It, you need bigger, stronger people and more of them to deal with building your building. So we built ours. So um, anecdotally, and so this also ties into um, directly into the question um, from Marsha. So on our next image, if we look at, this was our Quonset hut that we built. Um, this was our headquarters building at the property, at the compound. And on the, for this building, um, so we have these side windows, right? And Marsha is asking, do the sky, does the windows or skylight panel do the, d does adding windows or skylight panels decrease the ability of the structure to withstand hurricanes? So um, I would answer that in a sense, no, in, from the point of view of the manufacturer is going to engineer the building to the appropriate strength for your wind zone, okay? And I'll just jump ahead to, uh, for a moment here. This is just an image that I found online, and it's um, this is from the American Flagpole Company. Okay, so this is not the building code, but there are similar maps to this in the building code, and uh, this you know this shows you can see the wind zones, right? So here in the middle of Georgia, it's a hundred mile an hour band up. Uh, upper Georgia into Tennessee and most of the country is in a 90 mile an hour zone. Uh, and then as you go out closer to the coast, the wind zone uh, increases, the wind speeds increase, right? And so they will look very specifically at your location and they will actually use, I started to find, I started to look for a map that was actually from the building code. And then I realized you know which code is in effect in your state or your county, and uh, am I getting the most current map of the from the current edition of the code and all of that? And I just didn't want to get in a can of worms there, so I sort of deliberately pulled a map that's not the building code, so I can tell you this is similar to, but I'm, I'm making no claims that this is what the wind speed is in your area for the current building code, but it's similar to this, and if you can look it up, or go to your local building department and ask. And where you are located in Florida, your building will be designed by the manufacturer to withstand uh, the wind, the appropriate wind load. Okay, 
Uh, now, that being said, uh, I have to point out as well that the building code really is just um, an agreed upon standard that is then uh, applied and enforced, okay? And every time, I mean, pretty much every time there's a major natural disaster, they, they look very carefully. The scientists go to the buildings that failed and look at why and, and how and where within the structure, where, which connections failed and how uh, and why. Um, for example, in the Northridge earthquake in Los Angeles in the 90s, uh, which I was here for, and it was extremely violent, and buildings collapsed and people died. And they went out and examined and analyzed and freeway overpasses collapsed. And they looked at that and they updated the building code with the new information. And the, you know, the scientists really dug into the details of what caused those buildings to collapse in, in the type of motion that there was, right? So, um, it, there, so my, my point with that is just to say, Nature can always throw something at us that was not anticipated by the building code, that was, that was just a, a freak event that was larger than anticipated. It could happen. And so, uh, you know, you don't want to think of anything as being hurricane proof or of being kind of uh, unequivocally able to withstand any hurricane. Unfortunately, you know, nature, nature can always throw something at us. So uh, we have the building code as a guide, uh, as something that's enforced for our safety. It's a, it's a kind of, you know, there's a lot of, um, a lot of work that goes into uh, the science of construction to keep our buildings safe. So anyway, that's a, a little bit of an overview of sort of how these things are, are arrived at and how the building code sort of works, how your metal building um, engineering wise, you know, is, is determined. So let's go back though and look at the at this building and talk for a little bit more in detail about uh, the question of of adding windows or skylights. So what happened in our specific case um, with the snow load that we have and the uh, and the wind load in our area, right? We're just in that generic ninety mile an hour wind zone uh, from the from the map that I showed. But what happened, what they did uh, for our building to make this strong, strong enough is uh, at every location where there is a hole, a hole punched in the side for a window, okay, you can imagine that is a weakness in this, in the structure, right? The, the, the Quonset structure is a, you know, it's a, it is a um, shell uh, that is, um, you know, it's a continuous kind of structural shell. And when you punch a hole in the side of that, now you've created a weak, a weak point in this single membrane shell, right? So what they did, the, the other building that we got that's the same exact size as this, all the panels are 22 gauge. They're, they're relatively lightweight in that two, really one person can pick up one of those 10 foot panels and carry it around without too much trouble, okay? And for two people, handing them up a ladder and stuff like that was really easy. This building, the panels above a window, okay, the, the panels that are cut for the window. So in other words, like these, these panels right here at the window, those are 22 gauge, just like the other building. But the panel, every panel that's next to a window the arch that goes all the way across, not just the panel, the whole arch going across uh, is beefed up to 16 gauge. And so that is uh, much thicker and much heavier. And so um, up here, you know, up here on the top, uh, if we get a lot of snow load there, for example, the, the heavier arches to either side are going to, you know, have extra strength to help carry and distribute the load from on uh, top of the window where it's weaker because there's a hole cut in those in those arches, right? Each arch going across is sort of a structural unit. 
And as they bolt together, it develops the whole strength of the building. So when you punch the holes in it, it you've weakened that system. So on ours, they beefed up the side arches on either side of the window. So if you if you start from the left and go to the right, it's a thin, a thinner arch, and then thick, and then thin, thin, thick, thick, thin, thin, thick, thick, thin, thin, thick, thin. The endest ones are lighter gauge because they're not next to an opening. All right. So so they took they took the requirements of our area, certain wind zone, certain snow load, and they took the fact that this had windows in it and they compensated within the structure to create an overall structure that would meet all the requirements. So in a hurricane zone, they're going to do the same thing. They'll take the layout of your building with the window arrangement that you've got and look at what you're trying to do and take all the, the hurricane requirements. You obviously don't have snow load in Florida, which is nice. And they'll, they'll create the structure that has the adequate strength um, for your situation. Uh, now, another related uh, topic is um, if you know that once they design it for the minimum, are you automatically better off increasing the thickness of the panels anyway? Just take it up a notch, just to make it stronger. And I think that's a that's an interesting question too. Um, and I think I would say there isn't really, it's not necessarily that heavier is better in this sense. Um, the, the heavier panels on this building, where we had a lighter panel and then a heavier panel, there were sort of two things, well, three things uh, as a result of that. Um, the thicker panels cost more. So part of the additional expense of adding the windows is that you're also paying for beefing up the structure adjacent to the windows. And that's, uh, you know, it, it will add, could add thousands of dollars to your building, depending on how big it is. Also, the heavier panels were much harder to move around. There's no way one of us by ourselves could move one of the 10 foot heavy panels. Um, they were really heavy. And, um, and so then uh, that's a factor. Um, the weight of moving them around. And then the third factor that we really didn't anticipate at all, and the other two are kind of obvious, but, um, okay, when you're building a Quonset structure, it's not like building a Lego set, okay? With Lego, you know, they snap together, they go right where they go, you have instructions like snap this brick here and put this brick there, and it all, it all just is kind of perfectly proportion thing, right? These, when you're building a Quonset building, the sheet metal, these are stamped sheet metal panels, right? And so they kind of have a mind of their own and you really have to pull them into place and hold them down while you get the bolts in. And, and it, it, in, a, in a way, when, when the whole structure is together in the end, there's kind of a lot of tension in the building, which is good because that tension helps develop strength in, in the structure. But at the same time, um, the building that was all of uniform uh, light panels was much easier to put together. And the heavier gauge panels were just a lot harder to wrangle into place. Now, obviously we did it. And we did it with me and my husband, Eric, and my sister and a couple of, of her teenagers and our friend Steven, and the group of us did it. Now, none of us are big bodybuilders or anything like that. We're just kind of regular folks, and, and we did it. But it was, it was a real challenge, and it was more challenging than we expected with, with respect to that part of it. So if you're building it yourself especially, um, just beefing it all up just to be extra, uh, have extra strength when it's already been designed to sort of meet the basic requirements of your area. You know, it's going to cost a lot more. It's going to be harder to build uh, if you just go up, uh, up 
upsizing the thickness. So I don't know that I always would recommend that. It really depends on your individual case. So um, that is, uh, that's my take on, um, now, well, the third, the final part of the question that I didn't really discuss too much here is um, skylight panels. So the last time I was at the property, I recorded a couple of videos that I'm going to put together and upload here um, on on doing skylight, uh, the skylights, the skylight panels from the manufacturer. And my upshot is in a house, they're not a great option. And um, I will I will just tease with that and uh, let you go watch the other video. I will get that uploaded here and I will put a card in the um, on this video to link over to that one as you can watch it as well. So uh, anyway, that is my that is my take on um, windows and skylights and wind load safety in a quonset. So if you like this video, please subscribe. And if you would like to get my newsletter with tips and tricks on your own Quonset structure, as well as uh, updates as we build the Quampound, we're starting the guest house this spring. There's going to be a whole new Quonset build going on, and I'm really excited to share that. If you want in on the newsletter, go to clevermoderns.com. And on any page on the website, you can find a newsletter sign-up link. I'd love you to get my newsletter. It's really fun. It comes out about, about monthly. And if you want to join our Facebook group, if you're thinking of building a Quonset hut house, you got to get in the Facebook group. There's tons of good information. We have people all over the country sharing about their Quonset builds and doing research on insulation and research on um, all kinds of aspects of building your Quonset. So the Facebook group is called DIY Quonset Dwellers. You can search for that on Facebook or go to clevermoderns.com slash group. And I put a few simple questions in there. So I want to find out how you heard about the group. Just tell me that you learned about it from the YouTube video. And uh, what is your favorite thing about a Quonset hut? Um, just give a simple answer to that. And uh, third question is, are you hoping to build your own Quonset, or are you just curious about them? And either answer is okay. Uh, just so I can learn a little bit more about the people that are joining the group. So uh, we'd love to have you in our Facebook group. And thanks for watching today. I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.